Hey there, welcome back to the vlog. Now last time I showed you some stuff I did with the GoPro for a quick vlogging rig. This time I'm going to show you another camera I picked up. Keep watching. Okay, so as we showed you last time, the GoPro in a bracket and the nice fluffy Rode video micro mic and adapter and all that sort of stuff goes together really well as a um, really good low cost vlogging rig that you can just pick up and run with pretty quickly. And putting a cell phone on it as well lets you see what you're capturing. One problem I do have with the GoPro is the fact that it's just that um, really fisheye looking lens and stuff. It's just got that one lens. Now you can use the linear mode or the wide mode and that sort of thing and change that a wee bit and it gives you a few more options but I wanted to have a bit of a look around and experiment and see what else I could find and this is what I came up with. It's this little puppy here. This is the Sony QX10. It's a little camera that was um, looks like a bit of a lens and it was marketed as Sony's lens camera range there was the QX1 QX10 and the QX100 just the two of them and they never really sold which is a real pity well part of the reason for that is that when they came out everything was coming out in 1080 by 1920 and these were still a 1080 by 1440 um, anamorphic pixel image and people weren't all that keen on that in the meantime however there's been a firmware update for these which means it does process um, 1080 by 1920 properly and it's got full HD and it's a really good little camera. One of the great things about this camera is the simple operation. You just push the little button on top here and the lens slides out. Okay let's do a real quick geek out on this camera. It's a 7.76 millimeter XMOS sensor with a Sony G lens in front of it. The focal range when you're fully wide is 5 centimeters and when you're fully zoomed out it's 1.5 meters. The aperture is f3.3 to 5.9 and the focal length is 4.45 to 44.5 millimeters which is a 25 to 250 millimeter equivalent for 35 mil people. That's a 10 times optical zoom. It's a Bion's imaging processor, it has all the usual white balance no modes, the shutter speed is anything from 4 to 1 16 hundredth of a second, and it has exposure compensation of plus 2 to minus 2 stops. There's a timer in it, which is 10 seconds or 2 seconds optional, and the ISO is 100 to 12,800. The image resolution is 18 megapixels, and it does 1920 by 1080 at 30 frames video. It has great face detection and the Steadicam is very good though there isn't any information specifically about that and the whole thing weighs 105 grams. The camera doesn't have any built-in controls or display of its own but it does connect to a cell phone or tablet using Wi-Fi and NFC for fast connection. The camera does require you to have play memories on your phone or tablet but once you've got this you do have single shot autofocus, touch autofocus and the ability to preview and download the images and movies to your phone directly like the GoPro it means that you can put this onto a rig have a cell phone facing you and you're away laughing for a vlogging camera and it looks just like this so I've got the camera sitting on that same plate that I was showing with the GoPro in the previous video click up here if you haven't seen that one and of course the uh, phone on a phone holder right next to it and it's connected via Wi-Fi so I can control that I can see what I'm doing and I can vlog with this straight away and uh, that's proven to be a really, really good rig. The only downside to this rig is, like the GoPro and the RX100 Mark V, um, the sound on the top is just off these two little microphones, and so it's, it is quite susceptible to wind noise. So naturally, of course, the best way to um, check out the camera and see what it's really like is bring it outside and have a bit of a play with it. Now, we've got a little bit of wind noise today, um, might be picking up, but I'm just holding my hand here um, just a little bit across the side of the camera which um, I find with this and the RX100 and a lot of other small form factor cameras blocks out most of the wind and just stops it from rushing across the top of the holes most of the time 
Um, the light compensation is not too bad. It's a pretty overcast day today at the moment, so all of this stuff up here, there's not a lot you can do about. Um, the one thing that's always tempting with this camera, the same with any small form factor camera when you're using your cell phone as a monitor, is to look up at the cell phone, of course, and um, sometimes you just can't help it despite it being there. The controls and everything are all through the on screen play memories interface. Um, you've got your zoom in and out display settings and there's a couple of little things you can do with the video like set up grid lines and that um, but not a lot of the manual control available I do believe this is actually a limitation of the current version of play memories more than it is the actual camera itself um, I think older versions of play memories used to be able to do quite a bit more I believe there might be some third party software I'm going to have to do a bit of a dig around and come back in another video and have a look at that and see if I can find anything else that um, can run this uh, camera and give it a bit more control I'll do a bit more digging around that anyway so anyway, this uh, gives you a pretty good look. So that's it for a quick look at the uh, QX10 and uh, turning it into a vlogging rig. Um, for me it works really well and the audio in it is surprisingly good considering it's just a pair of condenser mics on top as well. I've actually just done a firmware update in this one. I was surprised to find I still had it on version 1 so I um, went to nick my daughter's PC and updated it to version 3 and that's given me a lot of extra options back. I'm not going to go through all of those now. You can look up a fact sheet and um, tech sheet online if you want yourself and uh, read about all of that sort of stuff. I'll put a couple of links to those below. Um, one thing in here that really does irritate me is that um, Sony have an updater to take this camera to version 3 but it will only run on OS X version 10.11 so if you've upgraded to 10.12 or 10.13 you won't be able to run the updater Sony you kind of need to pick up the ball there and update the updaters so that they can actually execute on modern computers because while it might be a end of life camera these things are still available retail and people will still want to be updating them but anyway, that's all I've got for this. All in all, it's a brilliant little camera. The only thing it doesn't have with it is uh, audio input, but as you can see, that's not such a big problem. I hope you found this useful. If you have, don't forget to click subscribe. If you've not subscribed already, the notify bell, leave a like and put comments below. Um, ask any other questions you've got about this or let me know about rigs that you've made or experiences you've got with this camera. Have a good one. See you later.